was laboring under the extreme difficulties caused by the contest of these parties of religionists. I was one day reading the epistle of James, first chapter and fifth verse, which reads, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. The best way of finding truth is simply go to the origin of all truth and ask. Please, who do I have to follow? Scientology. The Catholic Church. To the Prophet Joseph Smith. The Seventh-day Adventist. Bang! I started to have a very strong feeling of missing something and seeking something, and at the same time noticing that he sees the world in a different way. It really had such a profound impact on me that I started to do a lot of reading and very quickly reading about Judaism. The pieces started to fall together where I just felt like I had found my way home. I have a very short answer to people who ask me why on earth would you want to convert you know, to Orthodox Judaism and I say because God told me to. Having converted not once, but twice, first to Reform and then to Orthodox Judaism, Rabbi Shmuley Yanklovitz is something of an expert on conversions. Both of my conversions were incredibly intense and transformative. And in my experience as a rabbi, this is the norm. And a friend of mine who was praying for me at that moment said he sensed Mother Mary came to me, took pity on me, and asked her son to save me. And I knew after that that the cancer was gone, that I should sin no more. And shortly after that, I knew I was called to join the Catholic Church, a church I'd never stepped foot in. So we were doing a meditation, myself and five other friends, and all of a sudden I felt this explosion of energy go up my spine from behind. And it was just like, bang. And I turned around and I saw this picture. And I said, who is that? She goes, oh, that's Papa Jim. He's the most loving man I've ever met in my life. And so I knew that, that I had to find Jim Jones and People's Temple. And finally, at one point, I surrendered. I said, okay, God, I want you. I want truth more than I want this book. And once I made that choice, I made that surrender, all the turmoil, all the struggle, everything lifted. I had no idea of the cross. I really had no idea what Jesus Christ had done for me. No idea of the plan of salvation. All I knew was I came face to face with God and he told me this is what I had to do. And once I made the choice, I didn't have a qualm. I didn't have a doubt. I'm surprised, I surprised myself. I realized at such a young age that I was able to put together and realize that there was something more out there that this website or this book or this topic, there's more to it. And I remember there was a, it was like a voice in my head, you know, and I realized it was probably just the God and the Goddess or the universe trying to tell me, keep going, you're almost there, you got it. Just, you've, you've hit the mark, you need to just keep digging, you know? About it. And it's just been such a spiritual journey for me. Um, I love it. I love every single bit of information I read about it. There's not one thing that I've read that I'm like, oh, that I wouldn't do that, or that's not how I feel about it. Um, I, I love everything about Wicca and about witchcraft, and I really, really feel like this is my path, my calling in life. When I went to a Kingdom Hall, I could feel the love and sincerity and warmth of everyone in there right away, and it put me at ease. Jehovah's done so much for me personally. I want to help as many people benefit from that same relationship with our God. Every day I studied, it was like drinking from the cup of knowledge and I just became more powerful as a spiritual being. I just have amazing knowledge and a viewpoint that is 360 degrees and it just stretches from here to eternity. I have a firm foundation that I don't waver from because I know exactly what I know. You just sit there with that and go, I am one of the most lucky, fortunate beings in the entire universe. I feel good. There's nothing like dynamics. It works, period. It really will change your life. 
and it will make the lives of those around you that much better. It's extraordinary. After I got all the physical stuff handled, then I still had all this like worry and concern with it, and so I went and I got Dianetics to address it. It's not a problem anymore. There's no pain, there's no, I'm not concerned about it. I play basketball all the time, I run. I mean, it's almost as if nothing ever happened. It, it is because of Dianetics, and that's, I know that. Uh, both my parents, uh, before their track, actually uh, made a prayer to, to Buddha. Um, just to keep their family safe and um, to make sure that um, they they were successful in their in their escape, um, which which I think gave them strength and courage to move forward and to really just find a better a better life for their family. He's a a bringer of truth. I feel that he is the Messiah. He's the messenger of God's truth. Um, to help us wake up? Yes, he is. He is Jesus. And, and you've just discovered that? I've only discovered that, yes. And, uh, since I've been on this path, through AJ's teachings, um, that's how we come to God. <laughs> I have memories of being at the crucifixion. Uh, remember being there and just the intense feeling of some my soul made someone I feel very connected to suffering immensely um, although I feel I suffered more than he did um, but just because of the development in love that he had at that time but for myself it was excruciating to watch basically the annihilation of the person that I love the most Whenever I think about him now, I just cry. I'm starting to have a, a soul, like an emotional realization of who he is. It's just it's overwhelming. Because I know that only God can save me, but at the moment I feel that you know, he's saved me through his teachings and his truth and love that I haven't experienced through anyone else. And I remember my teacher told me to cry, but I tried to cry. It was not happening. Tears were not coming out. And I started my heart. Still tears were not there. And I started to, uh, to pray. Now par prayers went on. I said, please, I don't have any shelter. Please help where I will go if this book won't answer to my questions. Please, Prabhupada, please. And in that moment, these tears fell off and I felt that prayers, power, and Shil Prabhupada's mercy, I couldn't feel it. So something happened that I prayed nicely and I was satisfied. Of course, there are times when the Spirit has been very strong. I think when, when I was 14 and prayed about the Book of Mormon, before I could even get the words out, I just felt the Spirit in my heart just really strong and, and I just felt so filled with light. Not everything is like that, but as, as I read the scriptures or as I hear truths at church, then I, you know, it's confirmed to me in my heart that these things are true and so your testimony just grows little by little. And so like I'm, I'm reading through the Book of Mormon and like boom, you get like an aha, the thought that these things are true comes to your mind. Peace, joy, overwhelming happiness, you know, and it's just kind of like impressed on your soul. And then the cool thing is it's not something that happens once, it's something that happens over, over and over again. Asking God, when I went home that night, I opened up the Book of Mormon and I started reading it. And I just had this warm feeling come over me that I knew was from God, confirming that the Book of Mormon really is true and that it's really His work. And because of that, I know that the LDS Church or the Mormon Church is the true Church of God. It's His work on this earth. I found an archive called the Mantina Archives, and contained within it was a book called the Book of Haggath, and it felt whole and building, and it testified of Jesus Christ. It says in the in the preface that I should ask God if it's from Him, pray about it, and He would tell me if it's true. I prayed about it, and I um, received a confirmatory feeling, just like I had felt with the Book of Mormon, that the Book of Haggoth is good and true and valuable, just like the Book of Mormon. I couldn't distinguish that feeling from anything else that I had felt previously. It was a spiritual confirmation. And I remember kneeling 
down in my living room and just um, crying. I've been searching for, for a witness of this work and of this church and, and just tonight, I got my witness. And it's burning within my soul of how important this work is and how true it is. I know it is. And it's hard to believe that just a year ago I was in high school. And now I'm in a plural marriage and struggling. But I know without a shadow of a doubt that this is the Lord's work. That I have finally found it. I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm making supplication. Allah help me, guide me, guide me to the truth. If you guide me to the truth, I'll never leave it. And I knew in my heart, Allah was telling me in my heart that Islam this is this this is true, you know. And I knew right there it was the correct religion. And at that point I had this feeling of um, of just peace, just uh, that's how I describe it, like peace with everywhere, within me, the outside. Uh, <laughs> it gets me a bit now, but I had this, it was completely different feeling for me and, and, and it's changed my life since that day and, and, I, and I've never looked back since. I started praying to really to find the truth. It didn't take a long time to, to find out that Islam is the truth and that there can't be any other religion in the world. I said, please, God, you are the one who listens, who always listens. Please, who do I have to follow to come to you direct? Christianity or the Muslims? I was 100% sure that God has answered my question. What is the right way, the only right way to come to God? Islam. And I knew, my soul knew, that um, it is what I've been searching for a, a long time, and um, I knew it even before I read it. When I got those statements, I just couldn't stop reading because I knew. And ever since I've been in the class, there's never been a doubt. Like when I was first met them, I knew that I, what they had to say was true. It wasn't something they said; it was something that I knew inside me. I felt. Uh, it was like a recognition. It was instant recognition for me, and there was never a doubt in my mind. I just wish that people out there could understand how much we feel and know this is real. This is not a fantasy. I know. I didn't have to believe. I knew.